Model steam engines top tip time part 53. This episode is all about making components and parts to make the components of the reversing gear for a Stuart 7A steam engine. And for the reversing lever I didn't use a casting, I show how to fabricate one. This is a small Proxon milling machine, I haven't really decided whether it's good or not. It's good for small jobs, this one is a little bit too big for it. Having said that, this Proxon milling machine is a really nice piece of kit. Like all Proxon products it's very well made and I bought it from a friend of mine who used it to mill slots in circuit boards. But for a job like this I think I need a bigger milling machine. When I was making the brake blocks for the Hogwarts Castle project then this was fine for milling some very narrow slots but this is just going to take far too long so I'm going to use another method, the sensible method. Put a quarter inch cutter in my full size milling machine which is currently fitted with a much larger milling cutter. Once again I'm using an R8 taper collet. And the milling cutter fits in the collet and all I have to do is tighten the drawbar which pulls the collet into the socket in the spindle and everything tightens up. This is much better. With a few passes of the milling cutter increasing the depth all the time I can easily cut a quarter of an inch slot in this gunmetal bracket casting. The milling cutter is making short work of this bracket and I've got right down to the bottom. I need to make it a bit deeper than it was originally. And of course I need to drill a hole through it. I think if I'd have been doing this I would have drilled the hole first but I have to work with what I have. By drilling the hole first through one side and then hoping that it's going to go into the other side in the correct place, well sometimes in the past this has not worked out. But the good thing is as this is a casting I can adjust the shape of the casting when I clean it up to correspond with the position of the hole. And speaking of holes, here they are. Two holes in the casting and the drill went through very accurately. Initially I drilled the hole one imperial size less than I wanted it to be and then I used a reamer. This is 5 30 seconds of an inch. Now the slot is at the correct width and the hole's in the right place. It's time to see if it all fits together. It now looks like this and here it is with the two holes to mount it onto the steam chest. Just to prove that everything's okay, I ran the reamer through the entire assembly and the reamer didn't remove any metal which is always a good sign, so it is quite accurate and fits together well. And when I hold the bracket in the correct position on the steam chest, the slot is in perfect alignment with the expansion link. So the next job is to put some marking out blue on the steam chest and let it dry. Then I'm going to hold the bracket in position and scratch through the holes with the scriber. In the chuck at the moment is a piece of stainless steel and I need to turn this down to 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter and drill a hole in the centre of it. I'm currently setting the micrometer to read 5 sixteenths of an inch. There are two ways to do this, you can turn the dials and read off the numbers on the side of the micrometer or alternatively just set the micrometer to the diameter of a 5 sixteenths of an inch twist drill. To be honest I normally do it this way because I find that it's quicker. This is a really nice piece of free cutting stainless steel if there is such a thing. Really I should use lubricant with it but for the purposes of the video I'm cutting it dry. The small carbide tip tool is fitted with a new tip and it's cutting very freely. I've just about got it to the right size now I think. Yes there you go, 5 sixteenths of an inch. The next part of the job is to drill the hole in the center. Starting with a center drill like this and finishing off with a number 40 twist drill which is a nice tight clearance size for a 7BA bolt. What am I going to do with this part when I've finished it? I'm going to bolt it to the reversing lever and use it as a guide when I grind the reversing lever to shape on my 1 inch belt sander. Before that though it needs to be parted off. You will notice that for the parting off process I have used some oil. When machining stainless steel it's a good idea where possible to use a carbide tip tool. This however, the parting tool is just a plain old high speed steel one. When machining or drilling stainless steel it can be a big problem, you have to keep the tool going, keep it cutting, because if you don't and the tool rubs the work, the stainless steel surface immediately work hardens and then you cannot cut it. It just blunts the tool or destroys the tip of a twist drill. This clip shows me marking out the shape of the reversing lever, well the approximate shape anyway. Now it's time to bolt the piece of stainless steel that you've just seen me make to the reversing lever blank as shown. I've used a 7BA stud for this. 
The next part of the process is critical, and if I do it wrong, the part will be no good and I'll have to throw it away and start again. And I don't want to do that, so I'm going to be really careful not to take too much metal off the reversing lever blank, particularly from around the piece of stainless steel. On screen at the moment is work in progress. I'm removing the brass very, very carefully up to the scribed line on the reversing lever blank. You will notice that I keep removing the blank, and that's to dip it in a pot of water to cool it down. I have to do this because it's getting too hot to handle. And now I'm being extremely careful around the curve part. I have a bit of a guide, but don't forget, the belt sander will also remove the stainless steel. Now I've got somewhere near the shape that I want, it's time to use the polishing spindle to initially clean up the part and see roughly what it's going to look like. And in exactly the same way as when I was grinding this part, I paused periodically to dip the part in a tub of water, just to cool it. I'm sure some viewers are thinking, well why doesn't he wear gloves? Well, I think gloves are dangerous. Gloves can easily catch up in moving machinery, and you wouldn't know how bad the injury was until you took the gloves off and your fingers fell on the floor. That's enough of health and safety in this episode. All I need to do now is finish this part on a piece of wet or dry sandpaper. The piece of sandpaper is overhanging the bench and I've folded one edge of it down. And that way it makes it much easier to sand the part up to the edge, like the bush that I silver soldered onto the end of it. This job can be very tedious, very boring and takes a long time, but it's worth doing it because you need the reversing lever to look like a casting, and at the moment it looks like a roughly machined piece of brass, but keep watching, you'll see what happens. Once again, folding the sandpaper over the edge of the bench helps me to make the curved part the correct shape. It takes a while though. As always, this video is heavily edited. This job took about, I would say, 25 minutes to complete. And I'm talking about just the sanding of the part on the wet or dry sandpaper, not making the rest of it. Here I'm checking the dimensions before I move on to the next part of the job. What I have to do now is very, very carefully drill a small hole in the end of the reversing lever. This centre drill is far too big, but it makes the required indentation on the top of the lever. Now I'm drilling a hole down into the lever using a 1 16th of an inch diameter twist drill. Back to the lathe and it's a simple plain turning job to make the handle for the top of the lever. I'm using a parting tool for this because it always cuts square. And as this handle needs to taper, I'm rotating both of the hand wheels at the right amount to move the tool away from the work as it progresses down the work. I find this really easy for two reasons. One is I'm a keyboard player, so I've got quite good manual dexterity. And the other reason was my childhood obsession with a toy called an Etch-a-Sketch. You turn two knobs and you got a picture on the screen. Very simple, but very clever. The end of the handle is now 1 16th of an inch in diameter and it fits in the hole in the reversing lever perfectly. When I tried the handle in place though it still looked a bit bulbous, so here I'm removing some more metal from it. Also I've pulled the piece of bar further out from the chuck. That way I can use my carbide tipped knife tool to part off the piece of brass. This leaves a sharp pointy end that I then shaped like this. Here's the finished handle. All I need to do now is silver solder the handle onto the main reversing lever. And just for once, I'm not using too much silver solder. After the part was allowed to cool to black and quenched in some water, here I'm cleaning it up on the polishing spindle. The final polishing will be done with this stuff, this is Brasso wadding. But unfortunately, this is quite dry Brasso wadding, I need to buy some more. But it still does the trick, and after a while, the reversing lever looks like this. So why didn't I use a casting? It would have been easier and probably quicker to use a casting, but I didn't have one, and it was a case of, I know, I'll fabricate it. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists, and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.